We had, had technical issues trying to get people's images downloaded today for some reason. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't, sometimes email resizes images, whether you want it to or not, depending on how it's set up, I guess. So that was one. And somebody else sent me zip files, Joe did, and I just, they won't open for me. So I don't know what's going on with that. Technology, I just blame technology. Can't control it. I know in the, another site I use, we always use the drop file so that you can get a large file through. Right, and that's what I ended up doing with with the one uh, with Gail, but Joe sent me through Google Drive, but I still have to unzip the file. So it did, it just, it would kept giving me an error and I don't I don't know why, so. I don't usually have issues with my zip files, but for some reason it wasn't reading the file type. Very weird. Still too hot some days. <laughs> huh? It is. And I'm and by this time of the night, I'm like done. So I'm like, I'm not can't figure it out right now. <laughs> Normally I would work, I would like spend some time trying to search it and see if I could figure out why it would do that, but it's beyond my mental capabilities at the moment. <laughs> Uh, hey, Bob, he's connecting. And I know one person who sent images was coming on and she's not here yet. Oh, not, not on yet. Oh, let's see. Oh, uh, okay, Joe, if you're gonna take the blame for the zip file not working on my end, I'll let you take it. <laughs> it was weird. I don't know. I don't know. I never saw that message before. I'm really just waiting for technically one more person. So who sent me images? We actually have Julia sent an image too today. <laughs> hey, Bob. Hey, how we doing? Good. I was going to give it a couple minutes still. Just sure. because... The one person who we had issues getting images from that we finally got images from today is who I'm waiting for now. <laughs> so I'd really like to be able to talk about her images for her because it was like, we tried different ways and different emails and finally we just did Dropbox. So. And I'm going to apologize right now for yawning during this. It's nobody's boring me. It's just me <laughs> being tired. <laughs> no yawning. Yeah, that makes it worse. As soon as I you just, say that, you can watch it just feather yeah. across the Zoom. I know. I know. <clears throat> I will try not to. Lori, you're in uh, Chicago, right? You're yeah. In, okay. So you're an it's hour. It's only away. eight o'clock. I mean, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm up early and then by eight, you know, I'm done yeah. by now, you know, I'm like sitting in the chair with my feet up. I, I'm in Denver and it's not too unusual for me to be yawning by eight o'clock at night. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a, I go to bed fairly early too. So. Uh, so I'm not the only boring one that goes to bed really early. <laughs> no, I, I just. Like, it means yeah. you get the better hours in the morning, the early morning hours. Yeah. I'm, I'm always been up early. Yeah. Even in college, my college roommate hated me because no matter what time we got, we got home from out being out, I was always up by seven or eight, eight at the very latest. That's like sleeping in. So, so, so my college was, um, I was uh, involved in aquatics, so water polo and swimming. Uh, yeah. And so we had morning workouts. So in college, there was this thing about getting up at about 530 in the morning that really limited our nighttime. Yeah, that that's what I did. It just never mattered to me, I guess, because when I was a kid, we got dropped off at babysitters like before my parents went to work and they had to be at work at seven. So, yeah, we were we were um, we were up early. All right. Is Gail in? Yeah, I see a Gail, yep, Gail see Tanzer. Her. Yep. That's who I was waiting for because <laughs> I didn't want to. Um, 
She has a funny face, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nice, happy face. Um, yeah, let me just answer this question really quick and we'll get started. Um, Because I can't talk and type at the same time. <laughs> I love this place. It's my go-to lunch place. You know, really. All right, all right. So let's just get started. I know. Um, uh, let me see. Again, okay. I'm, my brain's not working very well today, so just, just you know, go with me here today. Um, we have about one, two, three, four, five, five images to look at today um, to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the order they were sent to me. So Tammy, you get to go first. Okay. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Let me share my screen. This one, it's killing me. I haven't gone over to this place yet. Um, there's a, there's a uh, sculpture, this guy, I don't remember his name. Dan Popper, I think. Dan Popper, 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 yeah. Popper, Popper, who makes these amazing sculptures of these wooden creatures, and they're they're gorgeous. So Tammy went over and, and shot them the other day. Um, so what? Oops. What uh, What are you thinking with this one, or what are you looking for? Well, I I think there's something lacking in it, but I I'm not sure what. So if so, anybody has any suggestions. Sorry, I have a question for you before we even get into the, like the composition is fine, I think, the perspective and, and the way you shot it. But my biggest question is, so you shot this, it's ISO 200. Do you shoot on auto ISO when you shoot? Um, no. Okay, so you set it at 200. Yes. Okay, which is fine. I mean, it was sunny out and that's not, you know, that's not crazy or anything. 13 millimeters f 5.6 um, and 130, 130 200 of a second. Um, my question is like, if I look at this closer and I don't tend to do this normally, but you see the noise in it. Yeah. So I'm wondering where that came from. So my question is how you processed it. I just ran it through Lightroom. Um, I think I reduced the shadows Okay. I think that's about all I did. I reduced the shadows and, and um, yeah, there's a lot of noise. And I mean, that's zoomed in. I don't, you know, people don't normally look at that and I don't even normally look at it, but I, it, it kind of caught my, I kind of could tell from this part. So yeah. it just made me curious how you processed it because that, again, like if you look at it far away, you can't tell that, you know, but um, it's something I'm not overly, familiar with and I'm sure like Bob or somebody else here might be like there's certain things that you do if you over process a little bit it brings color it brings noise into the color areas correct yeah right yes so yeah and if, if it, you bring the exposure up a little bit it can really um bring noise into it as well okay so but like pulling out the shadows would cause that if you take them too far but that wouldn't I, pull it but they wouldn't do it in the sky I have a I have a couple ideas for okay. you. Okay, all right. Okay, to start, this is a as as Lori said, this is a very beautiful um, composition. That's very nice. This is a very tough time of day to shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got super high contrast, and a one thing to think about is a beautiful subject does not make necessarily for a beautiful photograph because a photograph is designed by the light. And with this high contrast of light, my guess is that initially this image was way underexposed and you brought it back up and then brought the shadows back up. That's what brought your noise in. But the other thing is the time of day that you're shooting makes this very, very difficult to even get close because the density range is so high. You have super high contrast shadows and super high contrast lights. You've just barely got some detail in the highlights. So my gut instinct says if you can shoot this again at a different time of day, 
that would be ideal when you have like a side light you're also when it's at lower when the light's lower in the in the sky with less whoo with less I um, density Sorry. you will end up with softer shadow edge transitions which is part of what molds and shapes an image so if you were and if you don't have that option if this is the only time of day that you can shoot then what you want to do is work with uh, multiple exposures and then have one exposure for your shadow areas one for your highlight areas and one for your midtones blend them together and luminar uh, aurora uh the aurora 1990 what is it 99 90 yeah 98 99 whatever the latest version of aurora um, hdr processing is would do a wonderful job pulling this together for you those are just my quick thoughts for you okay have you ever shot like that before like where you take more than one image one you know different exposures hdr yeah yeah okay and i you your camera probably automatically can do that for you too, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Did well, you, I you know a that. lot of people have been posting black and white images of these sculptures too, because that seems to work very well. Yeah. Because it pulls out the textures in the wood and stuff. Not that you have to, you know. Go back and try that maybe. I, I liked the blue sky though. I thought that, that the, the contrast between the blue sky and, and the sculpture was mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah, it makes her head really stand out. Yeah. OK, thank that you. help? Yep. OK. Uh, let's see who's next. Next we have Art. Is Art here? Did Art come on today? I don't think so. Um, no, I don't see art. Um, he sent this in. I have, I don't, I don't know what he's looking for. Um, to me, there's nothing really, I mean, the only thing I can say is that I might have left a little more space on the right for the shadow, but that's all I really, I mean, there's nothing, you know, I don't know what his, it's a, it's a cool photo. It's a cool graphic image. Um, but without him being here to tell us what his intentions were or what what he wanted from that, I'm not really sure if he could have shot. I don't know. Anybody else? As, as far as the, if, um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm wondering if it would have um, given a different perspective to it as a landscape image, as opposed to having it vertical. Right. Getting more more room. More red. Yeah, more brick. Art, are you on? Is there only, a different, are you a different the only other than the one that's The only other thing that I notice is it seems to be the wall is in perfect focus and the lamp, which is coming forward, is just slightly off. Looks like it's slightly out of focus. A little bit, yeah. And, and then the only thing I was going to maybe, and maybe I'm wrong with this one, but the, and maybe it's a perspective, but is the um, horizon line, and I'm just looking at the um, horizontal lines there of the, the bricks and that, are they a little bit higher on the left than the right? They, they are kind of skewed. You know, they look like slanted a little bit, like yeah. not, not, not bad. And you know, maybe but, it's the angle of the, like the angle that you, it was shot and sometimes, at. And, and yeah. that's what I was wondering too, because I've run into that too, is where sometimes. So if it was but, shot at an angle, you can't, I mean, you can straighten it, but. Yeah, right. it would look like it would look skewed a little bit because it's yep. not straight on it's straight on the bricks. And right. sometimes well, you could, find... that could be fixed with a perspective change yeah, uh, right. just by going in and, and changing the right. perspective from that left side and, and just like you would if it was going up the hill. Right. And you could do that even in Lightroom with the, you know, and do one of the one of these things. But then it right, might because the, the, the might lines at the, the top are slanted down and the ones in the bottom right. are slanted up. So it's really a, a left vanishing point. So that I mean, even just that one it like, changes it a little bit. And maybe even the auto on that. Uh, it might. Yeah, I just thing. I just might to, do it. But yeah, yeah, maybe not so much. Yeah. It's a cool it's a cool shot, though. Yeah, nice graphic piece for yeah. sure. Does that help? Do you, or is there something else that 
you were looking for from this? All right, who's next? I think it would make a, a really nice magazine cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of room for text and stuff. It would be kind of cool. Yeah, kind of graffiti type magazine. Right. <laughs> Shot like this, you know, it could go, it could get even a little bit more contrasty, maybe a little more saturated. I don't know, it depends, I guess. It's just such a open to interpretation type. Right, Who, right. Whoever, whoever's speaking right now, we have no volume on you. I think that was Mark. Yeah, you're you're uh, dead to the world, Mark. Just a whisper, as far as we go. Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. Are we good with that one? Uh, Julie, I'm going to do you last. Is that okay? That's fine. <laughs> I'm good. You better, Bob. Uh, yes, yeah, I can hear better. you now. Okay, good. I just turned on the automatic deal. My bad. Should well, have this known is, better. Uh, this is the image that Gail sent. So, Gail, you're on, right? Can we unmute you? There you yeah, go. I'm here. Just yeah. curious, curious what you were looking for with this, or what your, um, you know, what you what you were um, thinking. I guess I'm really challenged by a couple things. Um, one, I just keep shooting flowers and <laughs> insects. I gotta get it right. So a couple things I run into is um, bad sharpness, one. Two, um, who, who's on Bob, Bob you mentioned. Sometimes I'm underexposed, so I get a lot of noise. I get that. Mm -hmm. Um, when I set my, uh, what I can never in that triangle, I have a senior moment, the S. <laughs> Shutter speed. Shutter speed. I don't know why I have such a forgetfulness with that. Even though I set my shutter speed really high sometimes in manual <laughs> or shutter speed, even if I turn the auto, um, ISO off, it like changes the number. Don't know why, because I know the insects, you have to be kind of at a high speed so you don't get the noise because with my camera, I have a D5600, I get a lot of noise off if your ISO's any more than probably 400. And even at that, I get noise. Um, so I guess I'm, I, I'm really trying to get more into macro sharpness and um micro sharpness yeah micro yeah so those kinds of things <laughs> well this isn't bad this image it, bees are hard i mean they're they're you know they're constantly on the move they're just not simple to shoot so you practice is oh, really man, the only the, way the to just keep at, keep at it the the hairs on the end of those leaves yeah. or whatever that's called is that's tack sharp and that's yeah. killer looking you know you just barely miss the bee by like a half an inch right it looks like yeah but that's sweet oh thanks i've been doing this for three years and i'm still trying and i no, still and I'm, I'm it. like you're and doing I'm great i'm assuming you're hand holding this because it's it's hard to shoot yeah. stuff like this on a tripod too is that you, don't, you don't have enough movement you, you know flexibility is that an autofocus or a manual focus? Um, it might be a little bit of both. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what I had it set at. I think I had it at um, because it allows you to do three things: it's automatic, manual, sure. or somewhere where where you can use your body to kind of rock in to get the photo. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, you um, you know, yeah. It looked like. I mean, yeah. It's definitely that end of that of that stamen or that leaf is just totally tack sharp right it's perfect right. okay yeah, yeah. these just take a lot of practice yeah um couple ideas yes. um one would be have you ever used a scrim what's a scrim 
A scrim is a translucent uh, piece. You can get one from Amazon for about, I think it's about 30 bucks. It's about 20 inches in circle. And you would put that over top of your scene and the scrim would spread out that sun. That would control your contrast so you wouldn't end up with those super darks and the super highlights. It would, and it just makes everything for when you're, especially when you're shooting flowers, it just goes, I'm going to use a real technical word here, nummy. <laughs> it just, it really, uh, just really makes everything go great because it really pains the contrast down. So that would be number one, that you would start with getting really good, you know, beautiful light over top of your flowers. And you can control how bright it is to how soft it is by how far away you move it from the flower. So now, that's... Heidi, is, that, uh, is that portable? Like, can you adjust it? It is. Abs yep. It's a... Sir, it's a circle, and actually, in a second, I'll go run and grab one yeah, when I finish one. telling you about it. I have one around the corner, um, but it's just okay. a little circle, and it has actually reflectors and stuff with it. But basically, the scrim is what you have if you have a little tripod and an arm and hold it over top of, and I'll show you how that works in a sec. Um, but you'll you'll just find that that will allow your light to go really well. Then you want to really, if you're shooting bees, you're going to want to increase your um, your your uh, aperture because you're at six three here at 105 millimeter, and that's going to not give you enough depth of field to ever capture even the full length full side of the bee. You can see that the bee itself is in focus and out of focus. So you have to deal with that. And better, you should have a higher ISO and deal with some noise later, like with topaz or with, um, you know, some of the other noise reduction, even in even in Lightroom and Photoshop. I use topaz. For okay, reason, so everything is noise. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll let somebody else talk, and I'll go find my uh, my scrim. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, started I, mean, using, uh, I started using um, a diffuser. I'm not here. Um, was it on this one? It wasn't on this one. But I started, I ordered a diffuser, but you got to kind of hold that over the flower. And it's like, I don't have enough hands. Well, that's where another, like a, a small a tripod or something comes in hand, yeah. a stand so that you used, can attach it. Have you ever used or seen a plamp? A what? It's called a plamp. It's it's a clip. It clips onto you. I use it all the time. It clips onto your tripod, and then on the other end, it's got like a little hand that you can screw in and out, um, and you can get that to hold a scrim or a diffuser, or you can even even if it's windy and you're doing macro, you can get it to softly because there's foam in it to hold the stem of the plant so it's not moving so much in the wind. Um, but it's really good for holding diffuse. Yeah, you've got one there, Bob. Yeah, yeah this is a, the Wimberly plant. It's exactly what she's yes. talking about. Let me put this behind it yep. so you can see it. Let's see. It's brilliant. Yes, it is. And at the other end is a clamp. This thing is freaking awesome. I, have, I, usually, I usually have two of them. One to hold the scrim in place. Gotcha. And the other one to hold the plant in place so that it doesn't blow. You got it. Ooh, I'm going to be buying lots of things. <laughs> okay. Um, what so this is. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll just what, claim a lorry. Yeah. We're not. Uh, we're not responsible for what people buy. Right. I'll uh, put links. I'll actually put links um, for what we're talking about too, so that you can okay. see what we're talking about and look so them up this yourself. Is, this is called a reflector, and in addition to the, the scrim that's in the middle, this one is translucent. So if we put more light behind it, see my hand is popping through, you can see it? Yeah. So yeah. that's what just spreads out the sunlight. And then you can also use it as, um, it has five different surfaces to either be a reflector or a sucker or just a sun block or reflect light in with silver or gold. Um, so it's it's a, just a beautiful thing, and the plamp is freaking awesome. It is. <laughs> Good call, Best Julie. Best thing ever. Best thing ever. 
I use it in the studio. I use, even if I'm going out to the gardens and I'm doing like macro, and yep. you know how sometimes you've got something that's just like really, you know, horrid in the background or it's just distracting or whatever. I take, I've got little cards or foam core like black or white or even colored ones. And I can put them in the clamp behind the flower or whatever I'm trying to capture. Um, and then they give you a really nice background as opposed to whatever the distracting thing is behind. Because sometimes you just can't always get into the, the optimum position to capture something without having something horrible in the background. Um, or if you're at a flower show and there's lots of people, I've done that before too. So you put that up so you're not getting people sort of walking past behind your shot and that. But the plant is just, yeah, brilliant. Love it. Um, nice. I'll have to get a couple of those. <laughs> and Bob, on the, um, I call that, I guess, a diffuser. I have a small one of those that I just got. So, sure. This yeah. it's called a. This one's a Westcott twenty inch reflector, and the thing I like about it is that it's twenty inches when it's open, but it's eight yeah. inches when you've closed it up, and you can hang it a little that, that, that little bag on your waist very easily. Gotcha. It in yeah. your bag, yeah. Mine's about twelve inches. I didn't realize that's what it was called. So I learned yeah. a new word today. <laughs> uh, in terms of this photograph, though, Bob, I mean, that that is the answer, though. The the hot spot over top of this just needs a, a tiny bit of diffusion and everything comes together for this photograph. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it would and it would allow that darkness to not be there and allow that brightness to not be there. But again, you would still you would need to increase the ISO and get a deeper depth of field for this thing to really work, you know, because you'd, yeah. you'd want to get and, the B, yeah. for the aperture uh, yeah. somewhere around eight or 11. And then um, don't worry about your ISO so much and be on a tripod. You know, in other words, scout out a flower. And, and if you have a, you know, depending upon your tripod, some of them have gimbals, which make it easy to maneuver and point in different directions. Yeah. Um, if you have a gimbal, that's an awesome way to do it. Same way you would shoot a bird. You would kind of go, oh, the bees are hanging over there. I see them going to that. You know, you watch them and you learn their behavior. And once you know their behavior, you'll know that, oh, they're going for that kind of a spot. And you kind of like focus on the spot for the flower and wait for the bee to come. And then, you know, snap away as it, as it starts to approach and as it leaves. Gotcha. Thank you. Oh, I learned cool. a lot. <laughs> this is do you want to do you, do you want to talk about your red your red flower? Sure. So she also sent in this. This was the before of it, and this was the after. Ooh, nicely done. So yeah, I think that nice crop. Nice crop. Yep. Yeah. It's good. I just wanted to get people's thoughts as what I could do better or different. Well, you've, you've definitely taken the distractions out and, and gone for your subject, which is absolutely beautiful. It, you know, and this is one of those ones where depth of field again becomes, what do you got? Um, here, I don't see it. Uh, five, six. Yeah, again, anytime you're shooting macro, you don't want to go so far as 22 because then, or 16, because then you're starting to add diffraction and diffusion to it. But if you can get a little bit deeper, check your lenses and practice with them and see F5, you know, higher than 5, 6, like 6, 3, 8, 0, even into 11 can give you a lot more depth of field. The other is that when you're doing something like this, focus stacking can yep. make a world of difference. Yeah. It takes a lot of patience to learn and do, though. <laughs> Um, it depends on the cameras that you have. Some cameras have oh, built well, yeah, in focus true. stacking yeah. areas um, yeah. um, and other ones you can, yeah, you can, it does take some patience and it is some post-processing, but gosh, what a freaking difference for yeah, I just took the a amount macro. of, mm, I just took yeah. a macro class and learned how to do all that. And it's not something I would ever do in the field. Probably I might mess around with it, but I don't, I don't personally have the patience for that kind of stuff. It's awesome. The results are amazing, but I just, it's, it's crazy. Some of the images are, you know, how many, how many shots they take to stack. And I'm like, 
you'd be, why that's you'd not be my surprised thing. with how few you things. can get away with in many well, no, cases, especially I, for I, a situation I, I take, like this. I, I take as little as possible because <laughs> I, I don't, you know, it's like, I'm not going to sit there and twist my, my rail, you know, a teeny bit for 40 images. It's not happening or however many, you know, but um, it does make a huge difference though, when you're shooting like drops, water drops and things like that, it, it makes a huge difference. So. But even at that, this is, this too. is actually now we were just talking about making this better. This is pretty darn sweet. Yeah, just the way know. it is, yep. you know, Yep. Cause I'm because, assuming this is, this is what you want really in focus anyway, this whole center area. And you know, it looks pretty good to me. These guys are popping out right here. Yeah, and in this case, sometimes with, with the macro, you want the um, selective focus as for as for, you know as opposed to the um, like you say everything in focus with like yeah you're not going to want so this one this stuff, I mean yeah. it works with the yeah. selective focus on this one yeah. I think because the yeah. focus is right on the area that you want the eyes to go to. So. I would just but the cool the cool like part that. about the, the cool part about focus stacking is you can actually choose exactly right. what you want in right. focus and out of focus and i think yeah. that's the part that i'm kind of uh, lobbying yeah. for yeah. <laughs> so i so challenged myself on that actually there were a couple of photos i took that day and i did i guess you could somewhat stack um but i didn't take 40. i said oh, i'm middle let me take five or six and see how that works. And it does make a difference. You know, you don't have to do a lot necessarily to make something pop, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Cool, nice stuff. Oh, so thank Art, you. Sometimes Art, I doubt myself. <laughs> Art, we already talked about your image, but you weren't on the, you weren't on yet. So um, do you want to uh, go back? Yeah, I'm just saying, if you want to fill us in and wonder what you're looking for here. What I look for is simple compositions. Um, I like simpler the better. Right, and this is very simple. So, I mean, what were you hoping to, to have us help you with here? I don't know if it, if, if it works or not. Well, what we talked about was the fact that my first thing was just that I might have left a little more space on the right here, and Julie mm -hmm. suggested maybe a horizontal um, okay. composition. Um, we actually looked at at straightening the bricks. Which yeah, I wasn't assuming, sure about that. You know, we we just assumed that that's because of the angle you shot it at, mm -hmm. because they look you know skewed. Um, but those were that was really all we had to to really say. Okay. Also, just a little bit on the you're just a hair out of focus oh, right, on yeah. the lamp itself, uh, Art. Mm -hmm. um, and that's better. easy to do in a situation like this because your focus is definitely on the wall here. and you're yeah, a right. little soft on the for on the uh on the main yeah, subject yeah. so that can be a that could be a problem for you mm -hmm. you know mentally because it's just slightly out okay but that was kind of what we talked about okay. on that I, I, I think i think this one is is really good and this maybe it's just me but if you moved a little bit meaning you to the right would it help to have a little bit of separation between the um, that shadow of the you know where the um, so right the here. shadow coming down right there yeah. yeah a separation between that and the um, the lamp itself right there you right know, so it's it, not cutting like, off the shadow even if you just had like a quarter of an inch there or something like that and okay. and that's super minor I mean I like I like the way it came out but I'm just wondering if that would give that little separation where you don't have those lines cross but, right okay. Is this somewhere you can go back and shoot? Uh, unfortunately, no. The building oh. is over there. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. But it's a great it is, image. I, it, I is, just, it is. No, yeah. it is. A, it's a cool image. Yeah, I, I, I keep trying to look for simple compositions. One, one thing or two things or maybe three things and, and eliminate eliminate distractions in the background, I guess is the best right. way. To, yeah. Just to keep things simple. But, what I like was the black, the white, and the red the contrast, colors right. in there. Yeah. And, and the wall just seemed to sit there. And when I walked past it, I walked past it. I used to work right near there and uh, <laughs> walked past it a couple of times. And one summer day, I saw this and 
uh, next day I came back with my camera, waited for the exact same time <laughs> and took a couple of shots. Yeah, cool. A cool shot. Hey, Art, do you have Photoshop? Yeah. Uh, have you thought about selectively going in and like popping that white and popping the red and popping the black since those are the three main characters here? Well, the, the uh, black and the red are popped. I didn't do the white though. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. We're going with the, uh, with the, uh, Ah. radio filter I could, you can probably brighten that quite a bit yeah or just with the yeah i guess you're in lightroom so yeah yeah, yeah I, i'm just messing around I just yeah and no, that's good but even a, a that shot at night would would be <laughs> would have been know. great but there's no bulb in the thing <laughs> <laughs> i thought about that's that, that. But there's no bulb you don't there. you don't need no stinking bulbs <laughs> 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 yeah that's funny yeah, yeah, good I, eye, Art. Good eye. Yeah, I was thinking about taking it at night. I used to work a four to, uh, four to eight shift in this place sometimes. And I came back one night with the camera. And bingo, no bow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Had right. the tripod, everything set up. Carry the tripod with me. <laughs> no bow. <laughs> <laughs> you to add, add your own light in Photoshop. Yeah. And then we have one more image, and this is from Julie. Um, and what you said you were looking for a winterish feel. Yeah, well, or it's it's right smack bang in the heart of winter here, and um, we've been having some really weird weather. And these some of the flowers are actually starting to bloom. So I grabbed these on a walk, and I just wanted to capture this this little bit of spring in the middle of of winter. Um, so that was the thought behind the, the shoot um, that I did. And um, yeah, I just thought I would bring it in because I actually had an interesting piece of feedback on it, which I won't share at the moment. I'll share <laughs> later. But I just thought, um, okay, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd, I'd bring it in and yeah, let everybody have fun. Um, Make their comments. And I'm well, your images are always, your still lifes are always amazing to me. I, I, cause I, cause what you do is not what I do. And it's just, I think they're always beautiful. Thank you. I, I have little nitpicky things on this because this piece hanging down and behind is bugs me. And this little corner down here. And those are, that's like minor stuff, you know. And, and and I saw that too. Is that like a reflection? The the first one you pointed out there. It's like wrong, a, behind is uh, it's, it's a piece of the, of the cloth, cloth right just, behind. Yeah, just hanging off okay. the back. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, the lighting on this is amazing. I like yeah. even yeah. that little bit of the kiss of light that's there on the you know, the vase there. I guess the the glass, the little bit of yeah. it, it's real soft, but it's it. I I love that. Though. It's great. Is, is that strobe, Jude, Julie? Yep. And where, is it um, what, is it a rectangular? Is it a rectangular up up left? Um, it is a large, like ninety centimeter octo box, which is um, shooting basically down, sort of on a almost on a forty five degree angle, straight down on it. Yeah. Are you letting it just yeah. splash? On, are you letting it splash on the wall? It looks like it's about like what a foot off the wall or something. Um, it is just hitting the wall, uh -huh. um, but it's only a little bit of minor fill because it's basically the lights feathered. So it's I like it. I, I like that. I like to let my light spill on the wall these days. It seems like I used to try to really go out of my way to keep that from happening, but uh, especially in portraits with the, uh, with in portraiture or I guess product work with the, uh, with a beauty dish. I just like to let it hit the wall now, but that looks great. I mean, if you're Thank looking you. for a wintry washed out, look, that yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Typical, um, typical of your work. Right. Thank you. Let me let me toss in here for just a sec. Um, I think this is really I that just has a wonderful. That's got that nummy feel. Um, that's a very again. Remember, that's a very technical term that you want to take into your language of, as a photographer. The one the one thing that really catches my attention though is on the white, um, the both both those facing the camera right. Yeah, both of those, that whole area there just looks oh, like we've wow. lost so much detail. We we could have maybe scrimmed that out a little bit or done something in post to 
to tone that down and bring it into the rest of the image um, because it's just, it's, if let's, can you flip this image upside down in Lightroom? Yeah. Okay, do that, Cl everybody close your eyes for just a sec and now open. And where does your eye go? To the cloth. Yeah. So that's a test that I do, and you can put it back now, but that's a test that I do all the time to check and make sure, is that where you want people to look? If it's not where you want people to look, that needs an adjustment. You want people to look at the flowers and the beautiful vase and, and that stuff. So if, if you do a little test like that, then you need to go in and you know, do some extra work to make sure that the eye goes to where you want them to look. And then I would probably, personally, I would probably crop in a little bit from either side. I feel like we're this, this beautiful piece is getting kind of lost in that space. But, you know, depending upon the, it always depends upon the use and how it's going to be displayed and that kind of thing. It's, it's interesting you saying about it blowing out, which it looks like it is there in the it original. It does a little bit. Yeah, in the original, I never never even noticed it, so I don't know whether it's a, a JPEG compression thing or. Um, but even even if it, even if it's not, uh, you know, take your original and flip it upside down and see what happens, and yeah. leave the room. Oh. I usually what I do is I leave the room, go for an environmental break, grab a cup of coffee, uh, work on some other images, and then just come back to it and see what happens. Um, and the longer you're away from it, the better it is because then your eye doesn't know what it's supposed to be looking at. And yeah. when it doesn't know what it's supposed to be looking at, it will go to the area of highest contrast. Right. And usually that's like, oh, geez, really? <laughs> <laughs> the, the comment that I had or the critique that I had is there's too much negative space. Well, that's where I was talking about the crop as well. I'll just crop but it that's, in a little bit. Yeah, that would be my only suggestion for that and i'm just cropping that little white piece out yeah so i don't know i just found because i was going for a, a wintry feel i just it, it just kind of threw me for a six when they come back and said oh there's just too much negative space and i said well okay <laughs> Well, well, again, so that's like always said, depends. It depends, on it depends upon it your for. use yeah. and your and your thought. And I think that somewhat, because those bright highlights are so bright versus your negative space out there, that's also contributing because colors next to other colors or tones next to other tones will read totally different. So if you had a white background there, those um, highlights probably wouldn't even show up. I mean, as far as, a, you know, being super yeah. contrasty. So I actually, thought, that's... I actually thought about going in and shooting it on a white background um, and the blooms died. So I never quite did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should go and get some other ones and, and try and restage it on a white background just to make a complete difference. But yes. Yes, you shouldn't just leave them sitting on a table for a week. It doesn't do them very, very good. Uh, you know what? Know. That that can make for some pretty photos yes. too. I've, I love that. I was, give, I was given a challenge uh, one year from a PPA, a, a fellow member says, I'll bet you can't uh, merit or loan a dead flower. And I was like, okay, you're on. Let me try it. And I loaned one. It was like, oh. No, they have way more character when they're dead. Yeah, Much we, more we actually and stuff. we did a, a challenge in a photo group that I'm in um, last year during our twelve week lockdown that we had, um, and we were to get a flower, a piece of fruit, or something like that, something organic. We had to set up a scene, and we were to go in and shoot it every day, or at least every once a week for a month without leaving it. Um, so that was really interesting. And some things I did an apple and staged it all, had it all set up, left it in front of the, you know, natural light. And, and I shot it every day for three weeks. Um, and some of the photos were pretty gross, but it was <laughs> really, really interesting, um, especially when I got to right towards the end of it, where it was, it really was a dried up apple. 
And um, I've got some beautiful photos out of that. Um, yeah, some things, yeah, bananas is something apparently you shouldn't try no. and <laughs> leave for any extended period of time. Um, but apples, pears, but yeah, some people were doing flowers and things like that. And it was really interesting to, to basically just set something up and just leave it um and then come back and revisit it again and again and again and again because i mean it, it's quite a, a thing um that beauty is found in decay and it doesn't matter what yeah. it is yep. i mean wherever you go it, it's there um but yeah i didn't like the flowers in this particular case once they'd all shriveled up and gone brown and horrible and disgusting <laughs> all right well that that's all the images we have this week so if, if anybody has any questions or anything um we can chat about something or we can call it a night <laughs> or a day for oh, Julie. <laughs> Laurie. Laurie. Yes. Laurie. Uh, I forgot that this is recorded. And so I have my email address. Yeah, but there. The, the comments, the comments don't show up in the uh, recording. Uh, I don't think. Or I can delete yeah, it. I, I wrote I, your I'm I wrote sorry. your email right because it's it's on mm -hmm my screen it, it, not if a, you can get rid of it because i saw that it, people can copy and then send to someone else right yeah okay i wrote Thank it down you. i don't know if i can delete the comment but we'll see what we can do i don't think that you can see them in the replay the no comments. you can't i'm pretty sure you can't it, no it's just it's just when we're live yeah yeah it's just that if people who copy down all the comment Right. Um, this time probably no, but there are times when in the comment there's a lot of things that you can keep. Yeah. Thank you. Right. You learned a lot. Good. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go re-edit my image now and have a little look at it. <laughs> Thanks for your feedback. Some, some and yeah, Julie, uh, you're guess yourself. You just second guess yourself. And, and Julie, your still lifes are always amazing. And I, yeah, they and really are. I thought that was beautiful. And I, I, I really like the, the back, whatever backdrop you used on there. I like the tones of it. It's just, mm -hmm. I've got two of them now, or three of them now. Um, it's just a seamless paper backdrop. Is that what it is? Okay. That's all it is. It's in a, a really, in really, nice. really, really dark. It's not black. It's like a really dark charcoal. And then I've got yeah. another one called Marshmallow, which is, it's white but it's not white like it's 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 a really it's not cream but it's it's a really sort of soft white um and then i've just got another one in which i haven't even tried yet it's called scarlet and i'm really really excited bright red i've never ever used a bright red <laughs> backdrop okay in still life so um, i'm kind of keen to do something with that i'm just not quite sure what yet well, the, the way that your lighting was hitting cool. that backdrop and the way you used that, I thought was really nice. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And yes, yeah. Bob, it did have a diffuser on it. Yeah. Oh, no, I saw that. I, I knew that. <laughs> and it was very, and it was very nummy. Yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm going to go have a look at those highlights. And yeah, maybe I just didn't <clears> notice it in the original. I'll go and have a look and I'll repost it up in the photo book, in the the photo book, the photo focus group if i could speak english maybe i need another yeah, and when i when i post the replay i'll post links to the um that plant the wimbley or Wim, wait, wimberly wimbley wimberly and the reflector that uh, Wimber sure too. Wim it's wimberly right i can't read my own writing yeah. so wimberly w-i-m-b-e-r-l-y yeah. wimberly yeah. plamp p-l-a-m-p I got it. Um, and then the the, the um, scrim or reflector set that I showed you was uh, from Westcott. Yeah, I've got and that. goes for about thirty bucks on uh -huh. B and H or, or Amazon. But the nice part about that is it just it's this big when it's ripped when it's all in its little package, and then you go poof. Well, you saw it explode. <laughs> but I'll add the I'll add those links then when in the comments when we um, put the recording in the community. So. Anybody else? Anything? Are we good? Did we all, all good. learned something. All right, time for a beer. <laughs> all right. Thank all right. You, thank you guys all. All right, guys. You all have a great it. night. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, you for doing this. Julie, look forward. Look forward to seeing that one.
and the red backdrop. Okay. I'm, I'm excited to see that. <laughs> Great. Bye-bye.